Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for June 27th, 2022, quarter on 2, 20 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for three tropical cyclones to be forming across the Atlantic, one in the Gulf of Mexico and two in the Atlantic Main Development Region and Caribbean. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, it is certainly quite active for late June. First of all, we have a disturbance that has a 20% chance of developing over the next five days in the Gulf of Mexico, drifting towards the southwest and then eventually curving back around into Texas. We have Invest Area 94L gaining some organization today, heading to the islands and portions of South America. And then we have a new tropical disturbance behind that. This whole area over the next couple of days will be also drifting towards the north and west where some development is possible. So looking at this here in the graphics again, here is that disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico, 20% over the next five days. Here is Invest Area 95, uh, 94L. And then behind that, we have another tropical disturbance with a 20% chance as this too approaches the islands and certainly the northern part of the island chain this time. So the island chain is under kind of a one-two punch here over the next couple of days. In the Gulf of Mexico, we have an area of low pressure that has now kind of moved off from the southeast U.S. and has now moved into the Gulf of Mexico. This will be moving west, kind of west and southwest over the next few days into the Gulf of Mexico where sea surface temperatures are very warm and combined with that, a big ridge of high pressure across the mainland United States will be forcing this storm to basically just meander around in the Gulf and then kind of move into Texas over the next couple of days. So bottom line, some heavy rainfall and gusty winds could be expected with this potential system as this continues to move. I would not be surprised, certainly, if this becomes a brief depression or storm. Shifting gears here again, looking at Invest Area 94L, we have a disturbance today that is a little bit better organized, not quite yet organized, enough to be called a tropical storm, uh, but it is becoming better organized. First of all, we notice that in the big overall satellite picture, we have way more convection today associated with 94L. It is not devoid of convection, but look where it is. This is the coastline of South America right here, and it is running into the problem that this is not gaining latitude quick enough. Now, this will be moving north, kind of northwest over the next couple of days in a trajectory like this, but it's going to come awfully close here to the coastline of the northern part of central or the northern part of South America. Looking at the high res zoomed in look here, we notice that we still don't really have a well organized system today. We notice that there's a lot more convective coverage, but that convective coverage is not leading to any significant and appreciable organization today. If we look at the recon plane that's been in there, we notice that there's not really much going on. Maybe some hints of a circulation on this end right here. Uh, where the plane is just now flying into, there is certainly some tropical storm force winds on kind of the northern side of this wave envelope as the trade winds are certainly increasing the flow in this particular region. But overall, we have not really seen any appreciable organization during the day to day. And I believe that is kind of one of the hindering factors going forward in this particular system. If we look at how the GFS forecasts the system to evolve, this is the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. For context here, these darker oranges and reds here, this is what you would want to see in a very healthy cyclonic area of low pressure in the northern hemisphere. Now, what we notice here is that on the 12Z GFS, we kind of get a very small system to try to develop here just south of the island chain and just kind of north here of where uh, the coastline of South America is at this particular point. It remains to be seen whether or not this will actually happen. If we kind of move this forward, the GFS eventually finds itself in the kind of the southern part of the Caribbean where development chances would be a little bit more appreciable after that point as favorable conditions and lighter trades should allow for gradual organization of the storm. 
if you look at the European, kind of the much of the same similar idea. Again, the European 6 Z run had a very similar idea, carrying it on this southerly trajectory towards South America and just kind of near the island chain, Trinidad, Tobago, uh, at that particular point. So the bottom line is there is certainly that potential that this could get awfully close here to South America. And in fact, if we look at the latest run on the hurricane specific models, the HMON forecast, we notice that it is very disheveled as it passes through the islands. In fact, we notice that the simulated radar at this particular point doesn't even have a well-defined low-level circulation as this is passing through Trinidad, Tobago, and portions of northern South America down here. Now, bottom line, we don't need a well-organized tropical storm or hurricane to bring significant impacts. There will be some very significant heavy rainfall in this area. If we look at the H Wharf again, kind of the similar solution here. The H Wharf does not really develop this until it gets into the Caribbean. Now, once this does get into the Caribbean, if we take a look here at the zoomed out look, what we'll notice is that if we jump up to the 200 millibar wind, what we'll notice is that the wind flow is all not all that bad. We do have a displaced low level circulation compared to where the most favorable upper level environment is, but this is actually not all that bad because the wind flow, generally speaking, is easterly from here. It's generally from east to west. And what that's going to do is align with the storm's forward motion. And generally, this will favor outflow and very light shear. There will probably still be some about, you know, maybe five knots or so, but not enough. Now, once this gets into the Caribbean, sea surface temperatures are going to be warm enough, but all of this strengthening and organization that 94L could accomplish is going to be hindered by how much land interaction 94L initially has with portions of South America. Once we cross over that hurdle, 94L will be in a pretty favorable environment with light upper level winds, favorable outflow aided by this upper level load to the north, helping outflow on the northern side and evacuate that air. And so there does seem to be at least some sort of potential that this will then strengthen into a formidable tropical storm or potentially even a hurricane as the centers the Caribbean. Now, in particular here, the H Wharf is a little bit more slower than other models. And in fact, here, this is by 8 p.m. on Saturday, we know, or 8 p.m., yeah, 8 p.m. on Friday, rather, uh, that we have a storm that is much slower and is actually able to spend more time intensifying under the conditions of the favorable, uh, you know, the favorability down here in the Caribbean. This actually leads to a storm being pulled further northward and possibly missing uh, portions of Central America. The HMON forecast for reference was actually not all that dissimilar in the 6 Z, but in the 12 Z run, it did correct and shows still a hurricane though on the northern part here of Central America. So this model run has particularly corrected south. So there certainly seems to be some potential for a hurricane approaching portions of Central America over the next couple of days, generally within this region, within the next about four to five days, it certainly seems like a hurricane is possible, at the very least, probably a strong tropical storm, low end hurricane. So after this point though, there will be another system to watch. The GFS forecast does show another system doing much of the same as 94L did. Now this time the upper level environment will not be as favorable. There will be this upper level low uh, right here that is kind of a lot further south and the outflow from 94L may actually impact this system to the uh, southeast and eventually this kind of lifts northward and gets killed off by this upper level low. There is the potential that we could have another storm, again, coming in that region within the next about week or so. So it is certainly something to kind of keep in mind. The bottom line for Invest Area 94L, there will be a threat of storm surge and wind damage over the next couple of days, mainly to portions of Northern South America into portions of Trinidad and Tobago. 
mostly the highest concern at this point will be the flooding and tornado risk as those certainly seem to be the higher end threats with the lower end threats being storm surge and wind damage beyond that is it a li- it is a little too early to speculate for central america which is why we are refraining from posting any of the updates regarding central america at this time so again bottom lines for the lesser antilles and northern south america Flooding gusty winds and isolated tornadoes remain a very distinct possibility over the next couple of days. This should all clear out by late Wednesday into Thursday. And after that point, we will be watching another system behind 94L for potential development after that point. All right. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.